The flying polyps are among the most enigmatic and terrifying beings in Lovecraft's mythos, appearing in the shadow out of time. Their origins stretch back far beyond human civilization, possibly beyond even the formation of the Earth itself. According to the scattered knowledge gleaned from ancient texts, and the accounts of those unfortunate enough to witness them in dreams or visions, the polyps arrived on Earth approximately 750 million years ago. At that time, Earth was already home to advanced alien civilizations, including the Elder Things and the Great Race of Yith. However, the flying polyps were unlike anything these beings had encountered. They were not part of the natural evolutionary history of this planet, but came from the vastness of space, likely from another, even more ancient world. The polyps immediately set themselves apart as creatures of chaos and destruction. They had no interest in building civilizations or engaging in structured societal order. Instead, they were a force of raw, uncontained malevolence, thriving on the domination and extermination of other life forms. Their arrival triggered a cosmic struggle between them and the great race of Yith, a conflict that would span millions of years and alter the course of the planet's prehistory. Describing the flying polyps is an exercise in uncertainty. Their name implies flight, but they do not fly in the conventional sense. Rather, they move through the air with an unnatural fluidity, seemingly immune to gravity. Their bodies are described as massive, amorphous and somewhat tubular, with a form that constantly shifts and writhes as if it is only partially anchored in our physical reality. Despite their vast size, they leave only faint impressions in solid matter, which suggests that they are only partially corporeal. They have tentacle-like appendages that manifest in unpredictable ways, appearing and vanishing at will. These tendrils are believed to be their primary means of interacting with the world, used both for grasping objects and for offensive attacks. Most disturbingly, the polyps are entirely invisible to the human eye under normal circumstances. This makes them one of the most terrifying entities in the mythos not only because of their raw, destructive power, but because they can stalk their victims unseen, lurking just beyond perception. They can only be detected by the unnatural disturbances they leave in their wake, the eerie whistling of the wind, the shifting of air pressure, and the occasional inexplicable displacement of objects. Their method of communication, if any, remains unknown. They do not seem to have a spoken language, nor do they engage in meaningful interaction with other species beyond acts of violence. However, they do appear to possess a form of intelligence, operating with a sinister purpose rather than acting as mere mindless beasts. The flying polyps are among the most powerful entities to have ever walked, or floated, upon the Earth. Their abilities defy conventional physics, making them nearly impossible to contain or combat. One of their most terrifying powers is their ability to control the air itself. They can summon massive gusts of wind, creating localised cyclones capable of tearing structures apart. This mastery over the elements makes them particularly difficult to track or trap, as they can simply blast away obstacles in their path. Their ability to remain unseen grants them an enormous tactical advantage. They can move undetected, striking suddenly and with devastating force. This makes them nearly impossible to fight by conventional means, as they can eliminate threats before those threats even realise they are being targeted. Despite their apparent lack of a rigid physical form, the polyps are incredibly strong. They can demolish entire cities, reducing them to rubble in a matter of moments. Even the great race of Yith, one of the most intellectually advanced species in the mythos, was unable to destroy them entirely, instead opting to imprison them deep underground. Whether they possess a form of telepathy, or some other supernatural means of sensing their surroundings, is unknown but their ability to track and hunt prey without traditional senses suggests an awareness that extends beyond the physical world. The flying polyps were not the dominant force on Earth for long. 
Though they initially rampaged freely, they soon came into conflict with the great race of Yith, an immensely advanced species known for their ability to transfer their consciousness across time and space. Unlike the Polyps, the Yithians were builders, scholars, and historians. They sought to preserve knowledge and safeguard their civilization from destruction. The Yithians viewed the Polyps as a direct threat to their survival, and a great war erupted between the two species. Using their immense intellect, the Yithians devised a plan to contain the Polyps rather than destroy them. Over centuries, they constructed massive underground structures, vast and labyrinthine, designed to trap the polyps beneath the surface of the earth. Eventually, they succeeded in sealing them away, burying them in deep subterranean cities where they would remain imprisoned for millions of years. However, the Yithians knew that the imprisonment of the polyps was not permanent. Their own prophetic visions showed them that, in the far future, long after the downfall of human civilization, the polyps would rise again, freed from their underground tombs. What they will do upon their return remains a horrifying mystery. However, based on their past behavior, destruction on a vast scale seems to be very much on the cards. Despite their immense power, the flying polyps are not entirely invincible. The fact that the great race of Yith was able to imprison them suggests that they do have certain vulnerabilities. One of their key weaknesses appears to be a susceptibility to advanced forms of technology and psychic manipulation. The Yithians were able to use their superior intellect to design containment methods that effectively neutralized the polyps, at least temporarily. This implies that some form of mental control or force field technology may be effective in dealing with them. Additionally, their reliance on movement through the air could theoretically be disrupted. If they require a certain atmospheric composition or air currents to move, then altering these conditions, such as in a vacuum, or an environment with extreme air pressure, might hinder their mobility. However, there is no solid evidence that this would be enough to stop them completely. Physical barriers, while not a permanent solution, have proven effective in at least containing them for extended periods. The structures built by the Yithians remained intact for millions of years, suggesting that, while they are powerful, the polyps do not possess unlimited destructive capabilities. If the polyps were ever to resurface, humanity would likely be powerless against them with our current level of tech. Our best hope would be to learn from the methods of the Yithians, developing containment strategies rather than attempting direct combat. The flying polyps represent one of Lovecraft's most disturbing themes, the idea that ancient horrors are merely sleeping beneath our feet, waiting for the right moment to emerge. Unlike other mythos creatures that lurk in distant dimensions or deep space, the polyps are already here, sealed away, but not gone. Their inevitable resurgence is a chilling prospect. When they rise again, they will find a world that has long forgotten them, completely unprepared for their wrath. Humanity, with all its technological advancements, would likely stand a little chance against such an ancient and unstoppable force. The polyps embody the uncaring brutality of the universe. They do not seek dominion, knowledge, or even survival in the way other beings do. They are simply a force of destruction, unrelenting and eternal. And if the great race of Yith is correct in its predictions, one day, long after we are gone, they will rise once more to reclaim the world as their own. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video then please hit the like button and the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified of future uploads. Also, if you're feeling generous, you can become a member or a patron of the channel by following the links in the description. I'd also like to thank my current members and patrons who can be seen here. This has been the BewareCast and I'll catch you in the next video. Take care.